other one being the investment decision what are the linkages how economic uh, growth is contributing to the investment decision and even before that what uh, what do we really uh, mean by economic growth all these things we would be uh, taking up uh, in this session so whenever i use the word economic growth sometimes uh, uh, some people interpret it as a gdp growth or sometimes we even uh, see based on the gdp per capita kind of a growth right so basically uh, the most important thing whether i interpret it as gdp or gdp per capita the focus is more on growth not on the absolute values of the gdp so from that dimension the first thing i need to understand is what could be the various factors which an economy should look at if at all that growth has to be occurring in that particular economy the first and foremost thing starts with savings and investments the more and more savings are there that can create more capital into the economy more saving of the people it brings more capital into the economy so more businesses can start up more investments can come up which can lead to more growth in the economy so that is the kind of uh, positive relationship or positive correlation that can exist between the savings and the growth and basically the more and more uh, domestic savings that are there you don't need any other foreign investments for your growth this it looks like lot of self sustenance as the contribution to the growth but it can still be possible that even if you don't have too much of domestic saving i can get foreign investments and then still contribute towards the growth so any kind of saving first on the first priority more saving can contribute to the growth but at the same time even if my savings are lesser i can attract foreign capital if i am able to attract foreign investments even that can contribute to the growth of my country then how well is the financial system in the country developed okay i am able to attract capital but how can i uh, allocate the capital more and more efficiently right it's just not the availability of the capital that is important what is more important is how well i am able to allocate the capital towards the various businesses and productive uh, productive uh, uh, investments and uh, that is where we look at uh, efficient financial markets and if uh, intermediaries present in the system because different for different uh, sets of people based on their risk and uh, return potentials the financial markets get into the development of various innovative products which help in effective utilization of the capital that has been pulled out and at the same time they even address even if i am bringing in foreign funds or domestic fund this financial system will take care of providing liquidity and enough risk management to the investors and at the same time the products like mutual funds or venture capital funds or any of these funds they are majorly targeted towards pooling the capital from individual uh, investors and then uh, investing in them in a big way to generate the returns out of the major uh, investments also so even that is a kind of uh, uh, scenario that is uh, typically created by the financial market so the more established and the more uh, uh, innovative the financial uh, system in the country is the more it can contribute to the economic growth of the country and at the same time look at the political stability the more and more that country is facing wars corruption and any other such kind of uh, political uncertainties probably it's very difficult for those kind of countries to typically raise uh, any kind of a capital so
the 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 possibility of the growth in that country goes down drastically same way if the legal system is not effective it hampers the growth in the country property rights both physical property the land how well are the land acquisition rights how well is the property right in that particular country and even the intellectual property rights what is the kind of uh, uh, what is the kind of uh, 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 plagiarism plagiarism that is there in that country or at the same time what is the level of uh, 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 what is the level of uh, uh, intellectual uh, property uh, protection that is uh, available in that particular country all these things can contribute towards the attraction of more and more capital let's assume that piracy is very heavy in a particular country probably attraction of the capital becomes more and more difficult in that country then to what extent the country is investing in the human capital when i say human capital the education system in the country more and more people getting uh, higher education more and more people getting professional education so to what extent the higher and the professional education in the country is improving to what extent the health benefits or health system in the country is uh, improving all these things will tend to attract more and more capital especially if more professional education is growing more proportion of uh, uh, more proportion of uh, education educated uh, labor is uh, increasing in the country drastically that is a sign of attracting more and more uh, capital as well as more and more industries into the country which will contribute to the economic growth of that country and what is the tax system what are the regulatory burdens if the tax system and all are much much uh, liberal when the tax rates are not that uh, intensive there is a possibility of entrepreneurial growth in the country which could cause new industries new businesses to develop heavily which could uh, contribute to the economic growth and finally the free trade to what extent the country is favorable towards free trade relationship with uh, the other countries uh, in terms of exports as well as uh, imports because that plays a major role in improving the efficiency and the reduction of cost as well as it opens up the new markets also and at the same time when i look at unrestricted cash flows even if uh, domestic savings are not that great foreign investments can come into the country which can contribute to the growth and uh, as as foreign investors they can invest directly in india through fdi route or uh, in a domestic country through fdi route or they can uh, invest indirectly in the form of uh, buying shares and bonds of the domestic uh, country either of the way they contribute towards the growth of the economy in a particular country so all these things the more the country is focusing on all these aspects the more it can contribute to the growth of the economy now is there any kind of a relationship between the economic growth and the stock market growth so economic growth is what economy growth we are simply saying is is uh, on the same lines as the gdp growth right and gdp is nothing but sum total of the goods and services produced in the country so which is nothing but the growth in the individual earnings of the various corporates so the growth in the earnings of the various corporate is contributing to the economic growth and in a way because the corporate growth is growing the stock market growth also happens but what we need to understand in this process is in the short run the growth rate the stock market can grow either at a higher rate than this gdp growth rate or at a lower rate than the gdp growth rate in the short run either of these things are possible but what we are saying is in the long run the stock market growth rate should be same as the sustainable growth rate of the economy itself because when you are looking at uh, the company's uh, earnings which is uh, measured through your net income 
to the GDP net income growth relative to the GDP growth in some cases right now in a short run probably this may be higher than this or this may be lower than this but in the long run when you are looking at both of them should have to be the same itself which means the growth relative to the GDP growth is zero which means both of